What's up, bodybuilding fans? Dave Palumbo here with another RX Muscle news update. The Toronto Pro Super Show just let out, and we have a new champion, Juan Morel. But the story of the night really was the hard-fought battle between Juan Morel and Akeem Williams. A reborn, renewed Akeem Williams. That's right. We see Akeem Williams, uh, who joined forces with Oscar Arden just recently, uh, right before the New York Pro. Uh, didn't bring the look that we, we had hoped in. It was a little too overfull, I would say. And uh, he went back to the drawing board. And he brought a look to the stage here in Toronto that was lights out the best he's ever been, conditioning-wise. Strided in the glutes, in the quads, the hamstrings, the back was the best we've ever seen from him. He brought a look that I think we've all been waiting for from Akeem Williams, myself included. Now, uh, it's not to say that he doesn't still have some weaknesses. The, his back development in the, in the middle portion of his back, especially the rhomboid areas, are not what I think they can potentially eventually be. But this is a, the best Akeem Williams we've ever seen. Juan Morel, obviously the veteran in this lineup, just very polished, looking like a champion. Uh, upper body is just stellar. You know, if, if Juan's legs were as good as his upper body, this guy would be battling it out for the Olympia title. And he's improved them, and he's found a very good balance between fullness and size. That's to say, you can't come in too full because then you lose conditioning. And Juan, if he comes in too ripped, his legs look too small, especially because he's a taller bodybuilder, about six foot. But Juan has found a balance. He did it at the New York Pro. Even though he didn't get the win over Nathan Yesha, he comes back here, and I think he brings a comparable look to the stage, and he really needed it. If he wasn't spot on here, he doesn't beat Akeem Williams. A lot of people in the, in the house believe that Akeem Williams was the true champion here in Toronto, and I think that uh, his legs were certainly better than Juan's. Uh, deeper cuts, more, way more muscle. Uh, Juan structurally is, is still bigger than Akeem on the top. He's wider, you know, better V-taper. His back is certainly better, but I think you could make an argument that Akeem is better every place else. Um, so, you know, but you know, a lot of times shows are won and lost from the back. And uh, Juan certainly, while his legs are not that big from the front, they don't look bad from behind. They don't look weak, that's for sure. And he wins those back poses because his upper back is just is you know better than Akeem's. Even though Akeem's got the freak factor going for him, I also think Akeem needs to work on his posing. Juan was never the best poser, but he his posing has certainly got way way better, and I think that he's he looks like a true polished uh, you know champion here today, beating Akeem. And you know Akeem has made tremendous strides. Uh, I I think that you know I've seen this guy just improve and improve and improve every single year. He's got plenty of muscle on his body now. He knows he can get his condition in. He has to still work on that back, but I would like to see him do another show this year if he if he has it in his head that he can do it because. He's a guy who should be on that Olympia stage. He's got an Olympia caliber physique, and I think in the next year or so, we're going to see this guy really dominating uh, the, the pro scene. But what a great battle between these two guys. Uh, couldn't get more, more exciting than that. Cedric McMillan, okay, who is a former Arnold Classic champion, has to settle for 30. That tells you how good these guys were and how off Cedric was. To me, Cedric was a disappointment here. He's got all the tools to win shows you know, easily. He comes in here very flat. To me, his back just didn't look impressive. His conditioning was pretty good, but he looked on the smaller side. And like I said, when a guy like you know uh, Rafael Brandeo and Antoine Valier can can challenge Cedric for that third position, you, you, and that's a problem. Cedric should be dominating these lineups. I mean, and once again, his biggest problem is consistency. He just hasn't been able to bring the consistency we've seen over the years. Uh, sometimes he's amazing, sometimes he's terrible. This is not terrible, and this is not amazing. It's somewhere in between. So he settles for third here. Antoine Valier on the comeback of the year has to be really applauded. This is a guy who had a, a drug addiction problem. He was on our TV show. He really, I mean, could have theoretically been dead, you know, and he had three relapses, and he's back on the clean path. He looks great here. I think this is a great comeback for him. He's still young. He's only 30 years old. I think he can be someone in the future who can be a great champion. This is, for him, a victory in, in my mind. And I want to just give him a big, huge congratulations on the fourth-place finish. 
In fifth place, obviously, is going to be Rafael Brandeo, who has been just ripping up the scene. Came onto the scene as an unknown. You know, really wowed the crowd in New York with a sixth place finish. A lot of people felt should have been higher. He was fantastic in California in the third place uh, finish there. And his fifth place finish here is also tremendous. I think his conditioning's fading a little bit. He might be getting a little burnt out. It's hard to hit these shows and peak week after week, especially when you're traveling back and forth across coasts from New York to California, back to, you know, Toronto. So I think, you know, this is not the best Rafael Brandeo, but I think he really made a good impression on the judges. And I think that this is a guy in the future who could be a great champion if he can continue to put size on and fill out his frame. So... Once again, congratulations uh, to Juan Morel on the big win. And, of course, Hakeem Williams probably, you know, uh, the most significant, uh, I guess, uh, physique on that stage because of what he was able to bring to the stage conditioning-wise and back improvement-wise because I don't think anyone expected to see that. And he really proved that he's going to be a force to be reckoned with moving forward. Uh, winning that 212 division, Zane Watson, you got to take your hat off to him. You know, he, he had a rough loss. Uh, at the last time we saw him out there, and uh, I think he was a little disappointed in that New York loss to Sean Clarita. Comes back, wins here in Toronto in his hometown, and that's uh, you know it's a huge feather in his cap, especially since he beats Cody Montgomery, who lost I think I believe 12 pounds in like two days uh, to make that weight class in the 212. He originally was going to do classic, no way he could make that. Obviously decides to go for 212. Barely makes it into the class. Finishes second here. Great battle between Zane and, and Cody Montgomery, both Chris Aceto clients. And look, what could you say? Cody looked fantastic. He's still young. He's a guy that I'd like to see move up to that open class. I don't think he's going to be able to stay in this 212 class for very long. But, you know, he collects $8,000, you know, for his efforts. And that was a, a great, you know, second place for him. But really, Zane Watson, you know, deservedly winning, earning his trip back to the Olympia stage. And that's going to be tremendous. So congratulations to him on that. So we had a lot of bodybuilding up in Toronto. Uh, terrific show. It lived up to the hype. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed my little input and insights. If you did, make sure you hit subscribe and turn on your notifications. I'm Dave Palumbo with another RX Muscle News Update.